On the panel that you were on this morning, uh, one of your uh, fellow journalists said if he had not assured uh, either Ed Snowden or other sources that he had access to strong cryptography, uh, that his interview simply would not have taken place. Is that something that reporters now are sort of cluing into that this is necessary? Over the last couple years, as we've seen the Obama administration very aggressively go after whistleblowers and increasingly go after the journalists who are the conduits for those whistleblowers, journalists are starting to wake up to the need to protect their communications in the interests of protecting their sources. And one of the outcomes of the Edward Snowden revelations that we and others have published uh, is, is sort of the, the seeds of a, of a sense among journalists that we're not very good as an industry about educating ourselves about basic data hygiene, about how to obscure our digital footprints, and about how to make sure that we just even understand the size of the digital footprints that we leave behind. And without going into too much detail, what, are, what would you uh, recommend to your fellow reporters? It would be useful, probably, for us to create tools that allow potential whistleblowers and sources to contact us anonymously. Um, you know, one ways journalists you know, can help, um, perhaps on author bio pages or Twitter uh, f feeds or something like that. Publish PGP keys, you know, something that would allow uh, someone who who might know something about waste, fraud, abuse, illegality, etc., uh, to contact a journalist without having to already sort of contact a journalist to know what it is that that they're talking about. If there are some uh, anonymizer tools uh, that this industry doesn't, you know, properly exploit, it might be time to to give some of that a look. But it is going to take a more basic understanding. Of how to, of, of just what the problem is we're seeking to solve, and I, I I think that our industry still has a very long way to go, which um, is an unfortunate thing, um, particularly given uh, the outsized importance that journalism plays in a democracy. Uh, specifically with regard to this uh, NSA scandal as it is broadened, do you get the sense that reporters have been intimidated over and above just the general sense that uh, someone may very well be uh, watching closely? I don't have a good read on that, and I don't want to speak for any colleagues I have. Um, I have been in some situations with these uh, with these stories that, that we at The Guardian have published where I have wondered what the impact would be legally on publication. Uh, and, you know, another thing that I, I never imagined when, when these stories started that I would have to worry about is whether my wife would be uh, potentially uh, the subject of, of some kind of, 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 a, of investigation, um, you know, as we travel. And this is what the British government did to my colleague and Greenwald's partner, David Miranda. And it is an ugly and unpalatable thing, and I, I can't imagine uh, having to be in that circumstance. And that has given me some reason to reflect on the seriousness of uh, government responses to, to our stories. But it won't stop us from pursuing them. It won't stop us from publication. It won't. If the purpose of intimidation is to make us uh, stop disclosing the depth of bulk surveillance. Uh, on Americans that is clearly in the public interest to know about, to debate, uh, and to decide if the public is comfortable with that, then that will fail. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the general pattern uh, of these revelations seems to have been revelation, sort of a quick response from the uh, establishment uh, it within um, about national security. Some chewing on it by uh, you guys and, and uh, the the public at large, some of those things are found to be false, and then uh, a le even a less credible defense is sometimes offered uh, by uh, the NSA. And it seems that there's, I guess, not a reluctance, but just an inability to deal with uh, a credible discussion in the public sphere about any of this kind of information. These agencies are not used to anything like a public discussion. Their senior officials speak rarely, if at all. Um, and often what they say, we've now come to demonstrate, is misleading to the point of being untrue. 
And this is going to be a major cultural change uh, for the NSA. It is kind of amazing when you think back, given the explosion in contractors to take care of the logistical aspects uh, or the technical aspects in many cases of the US intelligence community as it's steadily grown over the years, did they not expect that there would be people like Edward Snowden who joined these agencies or, and then you know, worked for these agencies as contractors with the sense that what they were out to do was protect their neighbors, not spy on them, and that they, did, did, did the agencies not think that there, there would be some kind of reaction? Do they think there won't be future Edward Snowdens? I think what you're going to see and what we're already starting to see is a kind of culture shock in these agencies as they readjust to, to a new reality.